Hello my soccer universe, I have used this midweek to readjust my office setup so you see maybe slightly a different angle here but that also meant for me that I didn't watch all that much action especially in Serie A I watched the Milan Napoli game yesterday I saw a little bit of Roma against Torino but that was more or less it I caught up a little bit on highlights in the morning so this may turn out to be a slightly shorter video but yeah let's go right into the action Milan lose against Napoli 2-0 at home and only 11 points behind the Partenope and even with a game in hand that seems to be too much I guess Milan are out of the title race after that loss and coach Fonseca really surprised with his lineup not playing Pulisic and also not playing Leao from the beginning so kind of a changed lineup although I always want to see Okofo and Chukwesa starting up front for once maybe not in an important game like that against Napoli however with Reinders and Theo Hernandez missing this could have been a managed loss if you would like as well. In any case the tide turned early when just Lukaku plowed through the defense. I mean Palvic tries to tackle him and just bounces off him. It's 1-0 for Napoli already in the fifth minute. Then Milan actually weren't so bad in the game. Played nicely but barely created any big chances and before the half Kvaskelia takes a shot that I think Mike Magnoc can do better on and it's 2 Napoli at the half. Milan then were looking for momentum coming out of the half. Morata scoring a goal however and a bill of he was offside so all the momentum that might have been building was taken out of it and then yes they control the game have more of the game don't create chances and in the end you have to be even lucky to not lose it by more than two goals so yeah Napoli that was one of the first real tests we will know more about Napoli come the next international break <music> The Serie A midweek round actually started with Bologna getting a rare win at 2-0 at Cagliari with Orsolino and Otgar scoring the two goals. At the same time, Lecce get a win at 1-0 over Verona. Dorgo scoring right after the half. Verona got two players sent off in the process as well. One before the half and one after the goal. Inter was slightly struggling with a well-performing Empoli side. I gotta say, had a goal for handball called off by Darmian in the first half. However, it then changed at the half-hour mark when Goglijice was sent off with a red card you know studs onto the leg and then in the second half Fratesi sees a shot deflected in the 50th minute he adds a second one 67 and Lotaro adds a third for an overall unfast win by the Italian champions. In probably the most dramatic game of the round Venezia got a 3-2 win over Udine. Udine had a 2-0 lead in the 25th minute through Lovridge and Bravo then a Poyan Palo penalty put Venezia back into action. The game then turns in the 53rd minute when Touré is sent off for a last man foul right on the edge of the box and from the ensuing kick of Nicolussi Caviglia makes it 2-2 and then another penalty, a hands penalty. You know, it was more an elbow penalty if you would like. And Poyan Palo converts again and it's a 3-2 win for Venezia. It's already a second win of the season. Retegi's scoring streak is halted but he gets an assist to assist the open goal by Samarcic in the 70th minute for Atalanta against Monza and then Samarcic himself assists Zabacosta to settle the game for a 2-0 win. Meanwhile without Bremer, Juve's defense is completely unsorted but also Mota is letting loose and it was a game without midfield play most of the time. Parma opened the scoring through Del Prato in the third minute but Juve were then pushing for the equalizer with Vlaovic missing a glaring chance. Early on McKennie then gets it after a VR cross. Very quickly thereafter Mann assists Som to re-establish the lead for Parma. You would then equalize through VR right after the half and you thought they're not gonna push for the win. Had plenty of chances, however, there were quite a few last ditch saves by the Parma defense, but Juve opened up so much, completely forgot about midfield, that Parma had actually two one-on-ones with the goalkeeper that they also could not manage, and so it ends 2-2. And on a Thursday evening, Fiorentina keep up the winning streak, winning through a Golson goal in the 72nd minute at Genoa. Genoa without Balotelli as of now. And Roma also got a win through a very messy Dybala goal where he catches out the entire Torino defense and then he, they cannot even clear it off the line. Overall, I would say it was a deserved win by Roma, but not much to talk home about either. However, City rivals Lazio are in really good form, winning 5-1 at Como. However, things were not as easy as they seemed. I mean, Lazio had a 2 half to lead through Castellanos and Pedro. Two goals scored around the half-hour mark within three minutes. However, with the goal of the evening, I would argue, Mazzitelli pulls one back for Como 
but then Austrian Braun with a sent off for yellow red uh, just three weeks later. Nuno Tavares, a star for Lazio this season, is also sent out for yellow red. That opened up the field. Patrick makes it 3 1 in the 71st minute before Castellanos and Chauna add two more. Instead of talking about the situation in Serie A, please indulge me on a little rant about the current state of Milan. We were all as Milan fans ready to move on from Pioli because it had gone stale. I actually welcomed Fonseca because I really think that his open play can work quite well. I also knew that we will have to give him a little bit of time because, you know, at Lille, it didn't start out well and then Lille became sensational in the second half of the season. But that to me is probably the first problem that while I rate Fonseca for his style of play, it's quite attractive. I'm not sure if he's a championship winning coach and Lille might be just the right framework for him to work within. Because seemingly we cannot handle the egos. And this is the one thing. Why are the Milan egos running so wild at the moment? Rafa Leao... I mean, you have to plead with him to put in a performance because he turns up when he wants to. This is not what we need from the superstar of the team. The only one that is showing up was Pulisic, but we saw it against Fiorentina that he has no standing within the team. Absolutely disgusting stuff. I'm not sure if they are good enough to challenge fully for a title, but they should be in the conversation and not after round 10 that we say they are already out of contention. This is what really annoys me with Milan. I'm not necessarily putting this down to Fonseca. I actually look a little bit more at the club leadership. Don't make talks about we want to win the Scudetto ahead of the season when it's pretty clear and obvious to everyone that a major rebuild needs to happen because we have to move on now fully from the championship team from 22 that the club leadership anyway already dismantled the day after the title was clinched, which is probably the most galling thing of it all. As a Milan fan at the moment, I'm really hoping that Napoli will actually get the title. I don't need to see Inter celebrating another one. But hey, yeah, I really hope that there will come a plan in place. But it seems like the Milan rebuild is about as long as the talk about the new San Siro or a new stadium, whatever. This is another story that I have not covered all that much on my channel. I said it already in the weekend's review video, there is one standard fixture for the upcoming round which is Napoli against Atalanta on Sunday in the early slot nonetheless. Napoli is hitting now a little bit of a tougher patch in their schedule and we'll know a whole lot more about Napoli's title chances and I think Atalanta is definitely a challenge there. I also do like the Torino against Fiorentina matchup, I think that might be an interesting one. And with Juventus opening up so much, Udinese against Juve could also prove to be interesting. Monza will host Milan, not sure what to expect of that. Potentially a Milan win will mean that Milan legend Nesta might get sacked as Monza coach, which yeah, not sure if I like that as well. Inter host Venezia with Verona hosting Roma as well. And then on Monday, and that's probably the game you should watch because I expect goals Lazio against Cagliari and will Balotelli get his debut for Genoa when they visit Parma to be seen. So this was a rather short review of what we had in Serie A in the midweek. I don't mind midweek action, but I think it's better to keep it all on the weekend. You know, make the league a little bit smaller. I keep saying this now. I think Serie A would be a great 18-team league. Would give us a whole lot of action. And we'll also keep the calendar slightly more open. In any case, let me know your thoughts on the Serie A round. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Sorry for the rant about Milan, but I just had to do it. I'll talk to you soon about more things in my Serie A universe. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.